In this lecture, we're going to talk about collisions, and more specifically, elastic collisions. So let's begin by first defining what a collision is. Now, when two objects make physical contact, they are slightly deformed according to Hooke's law, and this is known as a collision. Now, if the collision obeys Hooke's law perfectly, this type of a collision is known as an elastic collision. So, let's look at the following example that shows us what an elastic collision is. So, let's suppose we have two particles with mass m. Particle 1 is going in this direction with some velocity, and particle 2 is going in the opposite direction with that same magnitude of velocity. So, let's go to point 2. What happens when they actually collide? Well, if the collision is in fact an elastic collision, that means that all the kinetic energy that was stored in these two molecules is converted or transformed into elastic potential energy that now exists due to the fact that these two objects deform due to Hooke's law. And what happens in step three is basically once they deform, they will bounce right back as would a spring. So you can imagine this as being a spring and the four or the energy stored in the elastic potential energy in the deformation will cause them to spring back and they will move in the opposite directions but with that same velocity so this object will now have the opposite direction of velocity but the magnitude will be the same likewise this object will have that same magnitude of velocity as before but it will point in the opposite direction the, now note that we're making the assumption that these two particles have the same exact mass so in an elastic collision only conservative forces are acting. Remember, Hooke's law is in fact a conservative force. And this means that the mechanical energy of our system, of the before and the after system, is conserved. So, this is our before and this is our after. So, one half mass one times V1 squared plus one half mass two times V2 squared is equal to one half mass one the new velocity pointing in the opposite direction squared plus one half m2 v2 squared the other velocity of this object going in the opposite direction so v1 and v2 are the speeds or velocities of these two objects while v prime v1 prime and v2 prime are the speeds of these two objects and what this is telling us is that the mechanical energy is conserved. And that's because no non-conservative forces act on our object. We're assuming that no forces such as friction or air resistance exists in elastic collisions. And that means no energy will be wasted into increasing the internal energy of our system. So what are some real life examples of such collisions? Well, collisions on the atomic level, on the microscopic level, where the objects are very, very small, are considered to be elastic collisions. And that's because the objects are so small, and we're talking about atoms, protons, electrons, neutrons, molecules, compounds, these molecules are so small, these objects are so small that there's no place for thermal energy to go. And so therefore, our collisions can be assumed to be elastic collisions. So, not only is there conservation in mechanical energy whenever we talk about elastic collisions, but there's also a conservation in momentum. Now, momentum, recall, is simply the product of the mass multiplied by the velocity of that object. So, suppose we have two objects, once again, mass 1 and mass 2, as we spoke about earlier, that have those same speeds. So, mass 1 has a velocity of, of V1, and mass 2 has a velocity of V2. Well, the sum of their momentum initially is equal to the sum of their momentum at the final condition. So, M1 times V1 plus M2 times V2 equals M1 times V1 prime, the final velocity of M1, 
plus m2 times v2 prime, the final velocity of mass 2. So now we have a system of equations. We have one equation that comes from the conservation of momentum, namely this guy, and we have a second equation that comes from the conservation of mechanical energy because of the fact that we deal with elastic collisions. So now we have two equations and that means we can solve for any two unknowns. So if we know every single variable except any two unknowns, we can solve for those two unknowns using these two equations. And why is this convenient? Well, if we know the masses of our objects, if we know m1 and m2, and we know the initial velocities, the velocities before collision, so we know v1 and v2, we can then solve for the velocities after collision, so the velocities of the final system. So to find the equation, let's do the following steps. So our goal here is to basically find an equation that will help us find the final velocities of our two masses, m1 and m2. So we begin with these two equations. So let's take this equation and rearrange it. Let's, so let's bring all the m's one to one side and all the m's two's on the other side. So this guy we bring to this side and this guy we bring to this side. Next, notice we have m1 uh, multiplied by v1 minus m1 multiplied by v1 prime equals m2 v2 prime minus this guy m2 v2. So since this side both terms have an m1, m1 and this side both terms will have an m2, we can take those terms out in the following way and we get m1 in parentheses this whole guy minus m2 in parentheses this whole guy. Now let's do the same exact step for this equation. We want to bring all the m1s to this side and all the m2s to this side. Then we want to multiply the whole guy by 2 because each component has a 1 half and we want to get rid of that 1 half. We don't want to work with fractions. We want to simplify. So we multiply by 2 and then we take out the m1s on this side and the m2s on this side in the same way we did for this step. And we get mass 1 times the difference equals mass 2 times the difference in the velocities of object number 2. Now, let's recall from algebra that any a squared minus b squared can be rewritten as a minus b multiplied by a plus b. So that means we can rewrite these two guys in the following way. m1 multiplied by v1 minus v1 prime multiplied by v1 plus v1 prime, the same thing we have here. Likewise, m2 multiplied by this whole guy. So why is that convenient? Well, now we can take this guy and divide it by this guy. So we take this guy and we divide this whole equation. And we get the following. So number 3 divided by number 1, we get this. Now notice that the m1s will cancel, so this guy will cancel m2s will cancel, likewise these terms will cancel and these terms will cancel. And we are left with simply velocity of mass 1, the initial velocity of mass 1 plus the final velocity of mass 1 is equal to the final velocity of mass 2 plus the initial velocity of mass 2. And what this tells us is the following. This tells us that for any elastic collision, the relative speed of the two objects has the same magnitude before as after the collision, no matter what the masses are. And we could use this equation to basically solve for our final velocities.